Hey gang, ever wonder how event organizers monetize an event besides selling tickets or getting sponsors? Tim Gillette's here. He's been doing events for a long time. He's got one coming up this weekend, and he's going to tell us how he goes about monetizing events, why he puts on events, and how they benefit his business in a way that, again, doesn't have to do with selling tickets or sponsorships. We'll tell you about it in just a little bit. Let's do a show. Hey gang, welcome to StreamYard Connect. I'm Ross Brand. This is the show where we talk about all things StreamYard, live streaming, tech, online media. We cover it all and we do it each Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern for one hour. And we have a great guest today coming up in just a little bit, Tim Gillette. We're going to talk all about events. And when I'm talking about events, I'm thinking of things like in-person conferences, virtual events, Tim is uh, very experienced in putting on events, and he's going to share how he monetizes those events. And in particular, he's got a way to monetize events that go beyond selling tickets and sponsorships, but how having these events impacts his business and how he approaches the events. It's going to be a very fascinating kind of see-behind-the-business type uh, discussion, and Speaking of events, I want to talk about an event we had on Friday that many of you were uh, in attendance for, and basically it was a party, a celebration of five years of Livestream Universe, been live streaming for five years, but that's not why I'm bringing it up here. The reason I'm bringing it up right now is because StreamYard performed beautifully. This is the most I've ever put StreamYard to the test. We we did the 10 people on screen when that first came on, and we found that StreamYard was completely stable and held up well with that. But this was a five-hour live stream. We had over 60 guests. There were many times that the studio was full with 10 people. There were times we had 10 people on screen for quite a while. We were multi-streaming to both Facebook and to YouTube, and we also had a lot of things going on. We had over $13,000 worth of prizes to give away from, I think, 14 different vendors, and we had 31 winners, so an extremely busy show with a lot to do, and as I mentioned during the show when I was talking to Dana Bentz, who's the, they had a marketing for StreamYard, and she was on I said, there's no, I can't think of any other product, any other live streaming product that would have enabled me to do this show. There's just no other product that would let you bring 10 people on screen at once to have guests coming in and out. If it's a professional product, it would have taken too many people and too much time to set up the guests and get them in and out. Just no way to, to deal with that volume of guests with a small team. And if it was any other browser-based product, any other consumer-level product, there's just no way that it would have the stability to hold up under the test. So StreamYard is really a special platform, and I'm not saying that because just because this is a StreamYard show. I'm saying it because I put this platform to the test. We all did. Uh, all 60-plus people, everybody in the chat, everybody... Uh, on YouTube and on Facebook, and um, it really performed remarkably. So it was stable. The the owner, there were a couple of user errors on my part, but there were no tech errors on StreamYard's part. Uh, the audio and video quality maintained itself throughout the five hours, 
and it, it was a great time. We had a lot of great guests. One of the highlights for me was John Burke from Al Roker Entertainment came on. He talked about the rise of streaming. Streaming is where everybody is going towards. We all know that, right? That's kind of like a master of the obvious statement. But watching how these companies internally, especially out here, I live in LA, and watching all these companies shift around their executives to where they were in charge of the linear side of things. Now they're moving them out the door and now digital is taking over these Hollywood institutions. Okay. Right. It's really interesting to watch this right now because now we get these reports from our agent that we're, we're about, yeah, we need content for our broadcast or our cable outlet. And it's not about that anymore. Now they need it for Peacock. Now they need it for all these digital offerings and the stuff that's on the broadcast and the cable side needs to be larger than life so they need something that's big and explosive and it's going to make a lot of noise you know why because they're losing the battle to streaming and you can watch the entire five hours or any part of it we did chapters on the youtube video so you can find those people you know and watch them all of whom gave predictions for 2021 don't go there now, but you can head on over later to the Livestream Universe YouTube channel. There's a link in the description, and you can check out all the different companies and all the different people who came by to say hello and share a prediction. And we thank StreamYard not only for performing beautifully, but for doing a giveaway. Uh, Anita Sonia was the winner of one year of the StreamYard Pro Plan, so congratulations to her and speaking of StreamYard, of course you know the three pillars by now ease of use stability professional looking streams so excited by how those three pillars came into play and were fantastic uh over the course of friday afternoon there's multi-streaming as we mentioned you know the destinations facebook linkedin youtube periscope gets you on twitter your Twitch channel, and you can also use RTMP for any destination that accepts RTMP so you aren't limited to the destinations, although it's a, it's a great group of destinations and it's the ones that most people stream to. You can go to other destinations beyond the five that you see the logos for up on the screen. Let's talk about a couple of StreamYard updates that were announced at the town hall. And one of them is volume control. Gage Vandentop explains what that means. Uh, first feature update is, uh, it's been asked for for quite a long time, is uh, volume control. So it's not out quite yet. It's, uh, it's in the process of being rolled out. So you should have access to it uh, either uh, tomorrow or the, the day after that. Uh, but basically you now have the ability uh, to adjust the volume of both your own mic and any guest mic, which we generally it's not automatically. So it is the type of thing where, and Ideally, you don't have to touch anything and it, and it should automatically adjust your mic level. Occasionally, you will have a guest uh, that maybe for whatever reason is very quiet and it's, it's just it's, it's just quiet and you need to do something about it. So that's why we added this feature is to, to address that. I didn't see it when I logged on, so it's probably coming either later today or by the end of the week. Um, but maybe it's there. I just didn't see it. But Gage tells you where you can find it when it is available. The way you'll access it uh, is just uh, on those tiles that you have for adding and removing your guests at the bottom. Those three dots, so there'll be an option there to uh, control the, uh, the, the the volume there. And we also gave the ability, um, which is new, the ability to turn echo cancellation on and off for, for your guests, which is another way, uh, which also should be helpful for uh, troubleshooting with a guest who doesn't really understand that, that functionality. Yeah, and as Gage mentioned, StreamYard's basically engineered the work that they do in handling your feed and the feed of your guests and guests. Uh, you may not have to do anything with the audio. StreamYard's own mix may handle everything, but that is another option. You can lower the volume of your guest. You can raise the volume of your guest if need be. You can also disable the audio, uh, the echo cancellation, uh, and you would do that probably for a guest who has, you know, professional setup. They have a microphone. They have headphones. Uh, you also have the option for yourself of turning on the processing or turning off the processing. It's on by default. But again, if you have uh, really good audio equipment and the right setup and acquired environment to broadcast, you may find that you get even better results from your audio if you disable that processing. 
couple of news items I'm going to just hit real quick. One is that uh, independent venues are so important for the music industry and where so many artists have gotten their start and continue to play when they're not playing in the, the major major stadiums and arenas and the big, biggest clubs. Uh, so independent venues are crucial to the music industry. And just like other aspects of the music industry, independent venues are looking to live streaming and teaming up with live streaming partners. Uh, there was an article about it, Celebrity Access, if you want to check that out, about a partnership between a, a group of independent venues and people who work those events at independent venues and uh, some of the live streaming companies that are going to help them facilitate events that will be live streamed to the audience. And it's a, it's a lifeline. It's a way for those venues to hang in and, and, and make some money while there's a lockdown and while there's restrictions. If you're interested, again, that's at Celebrity Access. The other thing I wanted to mention is you may have seen that there are some new features coming to Instagram Live. Uh, up until now, you could only live stream for an hour on Instagram Live. Uh, now you can actually live stream for four hours. One of the reasons they made the change is even uh, in the field of education, a lot of teachers were using Instagram live to live stream to their students, their courses, their groups, and they would have to stop and then restart a new video. Now they can go continuously for four hours. And also, uh, you can now archive your live streams for up to a month uh, within, within Instagram. So it's not only useful for teachers and educators who may want to keep that there for students who, who missed, but for anybody who wants to drive traffic to the replay. There's also some integration that we had talked about uh, with IGTV, making it a little easier to discover uh, the go live section within IGTV. It's not really about you going live from IGTV. I don't believe at this point there's a way to go live within IGTV, but your discoverability, how you can find live streams when you're using the IGTV app. And of course, uh, the announcement we really wanted to hear was that they were opening up their API so that you could use StreamYard to live stream from your desktop or laptop right into uh, Instagram Live. That isn't the case at the moment. So uh, that's what's going on in the industry. And don't forget, next week we have our season finale. Andrew can. You can. He can. We all can do it. He teaches people about YouTube and is really a terrific creator and explainer of how YouTube works. And he works with the tool TubeBuddy, which we use in, in scheduling our broadcasts each week and how we go about picking a title and the tags that we use and optimizing our description. And uh, Andrew's going to talk about YouTube. There's a lot to learn about YouTube when it comes to going live and learning some of these fundamentals, which Andrew is really a master at explaining, will will be helpful to anybody who's live streaming or considering live streaming to YouTube so that you set yourself up for the best chance to su succeed. You identify where opportunities are. And uh, I look forward to a great honor to have Andrew on. We'll have a few other guests as well that we'll tell you about during the week. Uh, and also a quick thank you, as always, to our friend Jesse Guthrie, who uh, was doing all the, all the uh, backgrounds for us for this uh, season. Uh, first time I've worked with a, a designer on the show, and uh, Jesse's been fantastic, and we've really uh, changed the look of the show, and I'm, I'm enjoying all these different backgrounds that we have when we switch shots and and we want to say thanks to jesse for uh contributing to the show he's at streamsensemedia.com check him out streamsensemedia.com and also if you're looking to just get ahead go ahead and download some some graphics we have uh d Nimmons graphic packages are are inexpensive ready to go you can find those in the chat uh in the description and you can click on those links and check out what D has to offer as well. Uh, so thank you to Jesse and uh, check out his website. Check out his 
his subscriptions or premium offers. He's got, uh, he's just a great, great designer. So, uh, the last thing we want to tell you, I know most people here are li- are uh, StreamYard fans, but if you're not using StreamYard yet, you may be a fan, but you haven't actually started going live yourself or hosting your own show. You can get started by going to LivestreamUniverse.com slash StreamYard. LivestreamUniverse.com slash StreamYard. Get started. Check out all the premium features. You can do a 14-day trial. You can, you know, it's free to stream ongoing, but during that 14-day trial, you can check out what it's like to use overlays and backgrounds and add video clips and add your own logo and branding and take advantage of so many of the different features that make doing a StreamYard broadcast fun and yet are easy to use. And with that, let's get to our guest. We're going to talk about monetizing events. It's a great topic. We're going to go behind the scenes with our friend Tim Gillette. Tim is the founder of the blog and video conference. It's coming up on Friday and Saturday, November 6th and 7th. Uh, You can get your tickets at blogandvideocon.com. I'll be speaking. Hall of Fame podcaster Dave Jackson, Super Joe Pardo, Larry Roberts, a whole host of great speakers will be there. Uh, Tim is the host of the Tim Gillette Show. He's also the founder of the Simple Easy Marketing Method, and he puts on Simple Easy Marketing events every month. And it's great to have him here on StreamYard Connect. Welcome, Tim. Great to see you. Hey, man. How you doing, Ross? Good. Hi, everybody. I'm doing great. Um, You know, it's funny. We go way back to Blab days. We go back over five years now. And for some strange reason, it isn't to the last few months that we've actually been on each other's shows. I had a blast on your uh, Tim Gillette show, your podcast and live show. And and now you're here on StreamYard Connect, the first time that uh, you're on one of my shows. So uh, maybe we just had to wait till we really polished up our game in order that we felt the honor. But it's great to have you here, and I, I can't wait to talk to you about live events. You know, it's all it's always good to, to uh, you know what I mean? I miss the Blab days. I right. miss the people we hung out with back then. And a lot of us were just, like, figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. So many of us have gone off and found ways to make it work. I think the the cement that's bringing a lot of us back together is StreamYard. I really do. I really think that's the cement that's bringing a lot of us back together. Yeah, I mean, StreamYard has not just been a tool, but it's been a great community, a great way to learn mm-hmm. from other live streamers, to connect with other live streamers, to find great guests, and just to do things that we couldn't do with Blab, right? <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's got the ease of use of getting a guest on where you just send somebody a link, just like Blab. They, you, you know, they would press a button and they could come on in basically if you let them in. Um, but the stability is not an issue like it was with Blab. We can we can do this without worrying that you know somebody's going to have to refresh and go out and come back in and all those things. So it's really allowed creators to expand on what they're able to do as far as the content goes that they're putting out there. It is uh you know what I mean and there's there's a very important word that you said there and that's you know what I mean the community. Uh Blab was a community and that's what made Blab so great was the community. Uh coming into these now the other one uh you know what I mean the other one I can't even think of the name of it be something or other they they got the idea of community out there, but I think StreamYard's perfecting it. You know what I mean? It always takes the second and third generation. Then we get somebody comes out and perfects it, and I think that's what we're doing with community here. And it helps that the product works because then there's no reason for the community to split apart and yeah. go find something else when they have a solution that that is working. Um, before we get to uh, the inside story about events, and we have blog and video con coming up on Friday and Saturday, tell us a little bit about what to expect and how people can learn more about the event. So yeah, blog and video con started as an idea. I, I when I got started on this whole idea of online marketing, I didn't know what to do. I mean, that's just me being honest with you guys. Uh, I I was in the auto industry, and in 2004, uh, you know, got out of it. And Zig Ziglar was a I used to wash his car, and he said, "Tim, you should be a speaker. <laughs> you should be a coach." And I like, yeah, right. Me, you know, I'm a guy who washes cars and fixes cars. That's who I am. 
I didn't know what to do, uh, but figured out blogging as a way to just kind of post things online. Uh, you know what I mean? And that was my way of getting people from social media to my website. And that's how I got into blogging. Did I ever think that I would be someone talking about blogging? Uh, again, 2015, which is about the time we were on Blab, I was having a conversation with a guy who is going to make a guest appearance at this weekend. I'm a surprise guest, so I'm not going to say. Oh, okay. But he said to me, he said, Tim, what are the two topics that people ask you to speak about? And I said, blogging and branding. He said, then throw everything else out of your of your, your speaking corral and, talk, and, and say, I'm a guy who speaks on blogging and branding. And that changed my business around to where now I was doing blogging workshops. I was doing the idea of creating content online. And in 2018, my coach, who's, who's spoken at Blog and Video Con many times, uh, my you know was Craig Duswalt. And Craig and I sat down in 2018, like February or March. And I think my coaching session with him on this, I was sitting in a in the Hyatt on right on the river and in Chicago. Like I'm like the 17th floor looking down, talking to him on the phone. And he said, we need to get you back doing events again. And he said, uh, I said, well, I was thinking about doing like a blog con because they've all gone away. Nobody's doing blog right. cons anymore. <laughs> he says, why not make it a blog and video? He says, because there's no one. He's everybody's doing video. Everybody's doing podcasting. No one's doing a blog and video, a combination out there. Why don't you do a combination event? Because there are two things that I was famous for in, in that, that realm was blogging and live streaming. That's where everybody knew me. Is why not do a combination? So we did Bog and Video Con. 2018 was our first one. And uh, this will be our fifth one. Uh, our second online, unfortunately, we'd love to have them when we get back to 20 in 2021, when we get back to hosting live <laughs> events. I'm just stating that right there. Right. Uh, <laughs> it will become a live event again because it's 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 designed to be um almost around what the idea behind um, original blog world, if you remember the original blog world, that was what I wanted to create with this in the content creation space. And that's what we're trying to get to. So it's mastermind, it's it's learning, it's networking, it's everything about it. And that's what we, we're trying to do. And uh, using the, these tools, we're able to do it online, but it's not the same when you can sit down in a room and go, hey, let's turn the cameras on real quick and just do, let's record a podcast. Right. And right. that's what we're trying to get back to when we do live events. So, yeah. So talk about how you've decided to go about monetizing events. Uh, we were talking one day and you kind of told me a little bit about how you do it. And I said, would you like to share that when you come on StreamYard Connect? And fortunately, you said yes. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of a mystery. How do these event organizers of, of in-person events monetize okay there's ticket sales but mm -hmm. then there's the expense of paying for the venue there's mm -hmm. sponsors but then there's expense of paying for everything else from you know food hotel discount all the different things that go into you know buying a block of rooms ahead of time that go into putting an event on so how do you go about monetizing the event why do you do the event beyond you know, the relationships and, and, and some of the other good things that come out of it. Cool. Uh, great question, Ross. You know, when it comes to monetizing events, there is everybody thinks about ticket sales. First of all, I mean, before we go into what ticket sales are, all right, you mm -hmm. mentioned, all right, there's costs to put this on. Right. My last live event, guys, cost me upwards of $12,000. That was my hotel bill alone. That doesn't include what I paid the sound guy. It doesn't include what I had to pay for banners. Uh, it doesn't include, you know what I mean? The things like I had to do for, you know, speaker gifts, things like that. And, you know what I mean? There's a cost to running this. P most people don't know when they go to these events is the event planner has to guarantee so many hotel rooms to get the hotel ballroom. All mm -hmm. right. They have to pay a fee to do the ballroom. They have to guarantee so much food is being sold in the hotel. There's a lot that you have to do to be on this. And if you're looking at, hey, I'm just going to sell a ticket for $8.97 and that's going to help me cover it and make a profit. Um, I actually, <laughs> I actually turned down, uh, uh the sale of a, a, a very, uh, I almost was going to buy a very famous, uh, you know, video conference that is held, uh, here in the South. And I, I turned it down because the, uh, the, uh, guy who owned it wanted to remain partners and he wanted to stay true to that system. Let me just sell tickets for eight ninety seven and we'll make a profit. But he had spent two years of losing money. 
His last two right, years, right. he's losing money doing that. And I said, that's your problem. You're not willing to change. When I share with you this idea that I'm going to share with you, all right, on how to make money, most people are like, e -e -e -e, I don't like it. But then on the other side is that's the purpose of the event. It right. has a purpose about what it's doing. I sell, well, first of all, I don't ever sell a ticket to my event, ever. I never sell tickets to my event. I actually, instead, I sell products, services, and memberships, and the ticket to the event is a bonus. Right. It's right. an extra. It's an add-on. You get it. So I'm not counting on, oh, well, Tim, how many tickets did you sell? I don't count on that. I could sell 100,000 products where people get the ticket. When they're going to show up with that ticket is up to them. Mm -hmm. Now, that's my way of doing it. I'm able to offer that as a, at a lower cost. Everything I do uh, for, for doing sponsorship, for doing the tickets, for doing products or whatever I'm selling to get people in the door is to cover the cost of the event. That $12,000, mm -hmm. all right, that $12,000, I'm trying to cover, all right, with sponsorships, printing my workbooks out, all right? I got sponsorships that pays to print that workbook out. Right. Sound, all right? I'm offering table sales in the room so vendors can get in to pay for the sound guy, to pay for the video guy, to pay for all that stuff. So that basically when I open the doors of my conference, everything that took to get the people in there, I'm even. Right. I'm not worried about, everybody's like, well, how do you make a profit? And this is where I'm gonna go into it. Someone actually put in the comments, e-tickets. My live events, number one, this is a rule I have. My live events, I do not sell virtual tickets to my live events. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. I mean, some people do. I don't. I have a live event that is a live event and a virtual event that is a virtual event. I separate the two. Right. It's an experience to be in that room. If you're not willing to get out and come to the experience, then the, the, the event's not for you. Most people go, well, you can make more money. I'm not doing this 100% to make money, although I do make money. Let me just jump in with one thing here. Has COVID made you reconsider perhaps doing hybrid type events going forward? I, I, I am still going to go with still going to go with live events or live events and virtual events or virtual events. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. I, and again, I'm not I'm not putting down. I know there's a lot of people in the industry who just I'm not putting it down. I just chose that as not my model. Right. Right. Um, and, and I've always been a live event person. Mm hmm. As opposed to a virtual event person, I, I've always done virtual stuff because that's just live streaming basically put into an event. Right. Um, the the idea behind that is is I want people there in the room. I'm looking for an engaged community to be in the room. Um, most people are worried about like how you're gonna make a profit at this. Right. Have you ever been to these events where basically you've got these speakers, speaker after speaker? Um, I, I see D, D uh, just kicked in. I, I met D at, at, uh, at a conference a couple of years ago. He's a great guy. Um, speaker after speaker are doing a, a speech and then they're offering something to sell at the end uh, afterwards. Mm -hmm. That creeps people out. All right. <laughs> it does. They hate sales pitches. Now, my virtual events, no one makes offers. The only person who makes offers at my virtual event is me. I offer my mastermind, my inner circle. Right. At my live events. I have two speakers who speak, two keynotes who speak, and then make an offer at the end. They have to give a one-hour presentation. And if they start selling other than the last five minutes before the end of their speech, they will not be invited back. Right, right. The design behind it is, is you're getting an hour worth of content information, stuff you can take home and use. And then if you decide to go, hey, I like this guy, Ross Brand. I think I might want to see work with him. And additionally, and Ross Brand offers a a, a, a a package of some sort, all right, for $297 or $497, and you take it up onto it. And you go, okay, now you're working with Ross Brand. You met Ross at my event. Right. Paul Fink speaks at my events all the time. Paul Fink does this very famously, comes and shares at my event and gets new clients out of it. Same way. Here's the, how it works is if the, the people come in and do that, and I only allow two. When they come in to do that, those two people, all right, if they say 497, it's a 50 50 split. 50 50. So Ross keeps 50% of the money. I keep 50% of the money. The idea behind that is, is you want to get speakers who are really good. Now, I know really good speakers. I mean, I'm talking these guys, they, 
they, they, they'll come in and they'll captivate you. You'll be there with a notepad like this the entire hour. At the end of the hour, you'll want to go meet them because they are just so enthralled and keeping you educated and entertained all at once that you want to learn from them. And then they go, hey, would you like uh, a chance to work with me more? Right. And like right. people jump to go do it because they got them so engaged. They've taught them something. They've done something. That's part of the monetization process. All right. Um, again, some people get, ooh, I don't want speakers selling. Hey, you know, I offer other speakers. They get to come in and do it, but they can't, uh, they can't offer. They only can offer a freebie. Right. right now, right. I teach my clients, go speak at all of them and offer a freebie. Now, if I speak at Ross's conference and then I offer you to come over and get a free, uh, and I just have a ton of things that I offer for free. I offer like my 52-week marketing plan. I offer my 30-day blogging challenge. I mean, all these things for free. Right. After you come over and you opt in for the free thing, it goes to a thank you page where I said, hey, basically, hey, check your email in about five minutes. It's a video. And I said, listen, I've got another quick training for you if you're interested. Let me do this for you real quick. Take about 10 minutes to share this idea with you. And I give them another 10-minute training. Right. And then I offer them something for 20 bucks. And <laughs> Right. I make more money on the $20 sales than I do anything off of that. Because we go, what? If you can get them to pay you $7, $20, you get them to take that credit card out one time, guys. You get them to come out with that one time. You can always easily get them to do it again. Again, this is about making money, all right, and making profit. But the main thing I'm trying to do with my conferences, and I always have since 2012 when I did my first one, mm -hmm. is I'm trying to fill my inner circle. I have an inner circle mastermind, all right, with, you know, uh, I, I've got some of the most elite and coolest people in there, all right. Uh, you know, I have a, a, a legendary Disney Imagineer in my mastermind, all right, who got on a TV show last year following what we do. I mean, I've got all these great people. I'm trying to fill my mastermind. Everybody that I talk to, I put on that event because I'm trying to get, in a get people to join my mastermind. Right. When I get people to join my mastermind, the next thing I want to do is I want to help them. I want to actually help them become successful. Why? Because then I want to get them to take it from five figures to six figures and get them to come into my one-on-one -on -one mentoring program. Right, right. All right. It, it goes up and up. Everything I do is I'm trying to get people to come to my events. Then I'm trying to get people at my events to join my mastermind. Then I'm trying to get people to join my mentorship program. I have a process that works to do that. All right. That's how I monetize it very, very it's very simple, yet it's 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 complicated because most people are like, well, um, you know, I don't like the, the sales pitch, all right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't like paying fifteen and thirty thousand dollars for a keynote speaker. Right. I'm cheap that way. <laughs> all right. Um, so you then, want a speaker who knows how to sell because yeah. it's in your interest, you'll make money, they'll make money, everybody comes away happy, and then hopefully. There's somebody, you know, you vetted, so you know that they're going to provide a good product and service. So your attendees who follow up with them have a good experience and everybody, everybody kind of wins from yeah. that. Yeah, it is. It's win-win all the way around. And and the, the flip side is, is, and this is the way I speak. I go speak at other people's events. And even in 2020, I've spoken still without, until the virtual shutdown. Right. All right. I spoke at like 10 events the first three months. And then we got shut down and I had to cancel all my plane tickets. I was doing good at it. I, I, I pay my expenses to fly to an event. Right. I pay for my hotel. I pay for my meals. I pay for all that stuff. It's up to me to make my money at that event, to cover the cost of going to that event with ticket sales, to cover the cost of my event going on in May and November. Right. All right. It's a process. Now, I built this whole process with blog and video com because I became mission based, right? Not money based. Yeah, I don't have a Cadillac. All right, I don't have a Mercedes. I don't give a damn. I live in a condo, guys. I own several, uh, one and two bedroom condos in Dallas. I have a real estate business that does that as well. But I'm talking to you from my two bedroom condo in Dallas. I don't live in a mansion. I'm mission driven. I'm not trying to get the newest, greatest, fanciest, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Everything I do with blog and video con and simple, easy marketing, which we've trademarked is to help people build a content online. I want to build 10,000 content creators. That's bloggers, vloggers, podcasters. I right. want to help them build an audience of 10,000 people or community 
of 10,000 people so then I can help them make $10,000 a month. Now, Ross, you're in the business. You know, you got a community of $10,000. You're making 10 grand a month. Easy. Right, right. I'm, I'm out there trying to help anybody and everybody get there. And we're actually looking to create a foundation based on the idea of helping school kids get started with this by helping the school kids provide them with the, the, the tools they need for their first year, including their website, all right, their their cost to do the, the everything, the tools online, a laptop, whatever it might be to help them do it. And we're going to create that as a foundation because part of what we teach in Simple Easy Marketing is you got to become a giver in everything you do. Right. If you're not right. giving, you're not going to make sales. When it comes to selecting a venue to hold your in-person event, there's a lot of considerations, I imagine, that go into that um, based on how many people you can get, how much, obviously, the more expensive the venue, the more sure you need to be when you have to buy a block of rooms ahead of time. What is the? What should you anticipate? Like, you better be able to recruit this number of people to attend or don't think of, you know, getting a room at a, at a name brand hotel, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's several factors I look at at the, at the location. Number one, I mean, I, and I teach this very intensely to my mastermind members. When you're hosting a live event like this, number one, you want a ballroom that has no windows. Right. Most people don't know that. All right. Most people mm -hmm. go for that cheap. I can get this deal at the Holiday Inn. Great thing. And there's windows down both sides. Guess what? You're never going to host an event like this and get people focused on you when they can look up. Oh, look at the bird. You know what I mean? That's why you will host windows. <laughs> I, ne I never thought of that, but now I know why most of the high-end ballrooms and, you know, nice conference rooms for events don't have any windows. Yeah. yeah. So second that thing, makes, I was going to make sense. Yeah. I want, I want a place that's going to be comfortable for them to stay. Right. Uh, my wife and I, when we travel personally, we stay an awful lot at Best Westerns. It's just her, per for her training or her business, a lot of towns she travels to has a Best Western. So she stays at like their, their high-end Best Western Plus. I personally am a Marriott person. I, I am like a, a, a gold elite with Marriott. So, I mean, I just, I use all my events at Marriott uh, and stuff like that. I want some place that when my attendees put in a long day at my event and then have to go to bed in a foreign bed, they are so comfortable in that bed right. that they wake up refreshed. So in other words, I'm not going for the cheap, uh, you know what I mean, you know, Motel 6, all right, just to save a buck. Mm -hmm. I want them to become out rested when they come out. So I want a very nicer end. Now, this is something most people don't, and we used to be very strict on this, but we've kind of come, become lenient onto it, is 10 years ago or eight years ago when I started this, we used to say, always do it close to an airport. Mm. That makes it easier for your attendees to fly in, grab a shuttle to the hotel, not have to rent a car. Now right. with Uber, now I make it so like my personal event, I do it right dead smack between both the DFW airport and the Love Field airport here in Dallas. So that you can, an Uber ride from either one's less than 20 bucks. Right. right. All right. And it, and I also look for what else other, other food options. Yes, I want them to buy food in the hotel because it helps me, all right, look good to the hotel. Right. But there are going to be people who go, you know what? I just don't want to go to dinner in the hotel. I want to go out. So I try to make it near something that has three to four good eating options. Right. All right. So it's, it's, it's something community and it's not like it's not stuck on a bad street corner. And I don't want it to be like the only thing they can go to is the, <laughs> the hotel, the hotel. Right. All right. Like most people are a lot of people use in these higher end conferences. They've used these um, resort style places. You get to them. Great. You got to go to the resort bar. You got to go to the resort <laughs> restaurant. You got to go. I mean, everything's in that resort and you're locked there. Great. It's a cool resort. But you know what I mean? Every now and then you want to get out. Right. So I make it so they can escape if they want to. That's that's a key for me. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I had something else on there I wanted to do and mention. Um you know, then, I mean, you, you want to make your, your, so you can make it a, appear professional. Right. So uh, I personally have a sound guy that does sound and video and has been working with me since 2012. He did my very first event. All right. And he still is with me eight years later. All right. Doing my events. Um, and, and he's been here in the Dallas area. 
he he gives me a reasonable deal because he's been with me eight years. Actually, he he DJed my wedding, so I mean, wow. <laughs> he, he he's that good. I treat he's him practically well. family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I treat him very well. All right, I I do things like you know mine is is like I I'm, I put him up in a room so he's he's taken care of at the event, um, you know things like that. The biggest thing that I that most people won't do that I do is I have somebody who runs my room. I don't. Mm -hmm. All right. I never run my room. The back of that room is always run by somebody and it is never run by family. For years, my daughter ran it. My daughter and my wife can be distracted. Now my daughter, my mom and my wife are in the back of the room, but they don't run anything. I have one person who is neutral. An event planner is great if you can afford one in the beginning, right. but they're, they're a good one costs money. Tony Caruso is going to be doing a, a thing at my event this week. One of the best event planners I know. All right. When you can get an event planner to run that, it takes the worry off of you. So you can get on stage and run the stage and not have to worry about what's going on in the back of the room. Right. All right. And they, they're, they're in control of it. Other than that, I mean, you've got to put good people on your stage. I mean, good people on your stage, a good event. When you get to the hotel, make sure your contract is written in a way. Like you walk into the hotel at my events, you see my face, my picture, my banners, from the moment you walk away from the registration desk, it guides you to where I am. If the hotel won't let me do that, I will not book at that hotel. Wow. So, yeah. Well, they, I mean, this is just a wealth of great information for, for anybody putting on an event. What about um, recruiting sponsors and vendors? What goes into that? Like, what do you need to arrange with the hotel? What do you need to do as far as coming up with the, like the right packages to entice people? You know, it, it, you've got to make it so that it's it's a promotion of their business. In other words, it's got a benefit for them. So uh, one of the things we do is is we do sell speaker slots with right. vendor tables. Uh, and and I, I, most people are like down on that, but that's become the new industry standard of, of selling a few spots. People right. speak on stage. That person who's going to pay the, in our case, I think they pay $1,000 to get it. Right, thousand dollars. All right, what value are they going to get from the front of the room? If I charge them a thousand dollars to be in the front of the room and have a vending table, are they going to have a re reasonable way of connecting with people in that room to make that thousand dollars back? Right. All right. My binder. And I'm trying to think if I actually kept one out here. No, this is my old. This is one of my old binders from when I did the Rock and Roll Entrepreneur Boot Camp. But like my right. binder, I sell ad spots. Right. Back back. It's on the back of every one of them for a reason that, that you know what I mean? That people are going to know and it has their information to get a hold of them, which this was my old radio station that I was part of for years was on there. I sell inside binder spots. Oh, my wife took them all out of this one. Oh well. This was my <laughs> wife's. But inside binder spots. The cost to make that print that workbook every six months when I do an event is about five to six hundred dollars. So I'm trying to sell six hundred dollars worth of spots. Right. I'm trying to entice it in a way that I make it so that their stuff is uh, is visible, and I make sure they know. Put, you know what I mean? Put your website onto it, make an offer off of it, right. things like that. Um, everything that you do for a sponsor has got to have a long term benefit for them, not for you. If you don't, it doesn't have a benefit for them, they're not going to invest to help you. And again, it's like Zig Ziglar said, you can help enough other, you can get what you want if you help enough other people get what they want. Mm -hmm. And everything I do is, is I'm trying to promote people. Uh, I'm trying to help uh, build their businesses. If they're coming to my event, I want to do it in a way that they can help build their business. Now, that being said, I've had people who attended my, a, a gentleman attended my, now I've, I, this happens. All right. Uh, people have attended my events and a guy came to it one time off of a friend gave him his ticket because he couldn't come mm -hmm. and I allowed it and he got there and he had a very complimentary thing to what we were doing. And he basically come up to me and said, well, I noticed you don't have somebody who does this here in the room this time. He says, Hey, I, I got this list of stuff. If you let me come up on stage, I can share it with it if you want. And I turned to him and I said, that's what sponsorship is for. <laughs> And he's like, well, yeah, you don't have somebody else doing it. And you said you're looking for it. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm looking for it. Maybe next time. He personally was like mad at me. He left the event and said, I'm not coming back. The guy's going to charge me to promote me at his event. I'm like, you can walk around the audience and talk to people one-on-one -on -one all you want. Right. But if you want to get on my stage, 
Again, it cost me thirteen thousand dollars to put this event on. Right. Well, cover my costs to be in front of it. Right. You know, the people who get on my stage without paying are my mastermind members, my 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 inner circle members. I have them on my stages all the time. Why? Right. They're people I'm trying to get up there. You know, it, it's got to benefit you as well as benefit them. All right. I'd love to free pitch everybody. The problem is, is free doesn't get you anywhere. Right. Right. You know, I, I, the only thing I offer for free is I let you be on my podcast for free. <laughs> you know? Which is a good experience. I've yeah. got to say, haven't been on recently. We're talking with Tim Gillette. Blog and video con.com is coming up. Uh, not an affiliate link. Just head on over there and sign up, get your ticket, get involved. It's going to be a great event. I'm speaking Hall of Fame podcaster Dave Jackson, who was on the show just a few weeks ago. We'll be speaking uh, Super Joe Pardo, Larry Roberts, a uh, whole bunch of good speakers are going to be there. Um, what got, are I've you? Got two I've got two surprises. And two surprises. I'm telling you guys who they are. Okay. But I'm one of them, Ernst and Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so so pay attention people <laughs> take notes so you know um, ross one of the things that i've done with my virtuals this year and i want to address this most people are not sure that no they wonder why why am i doing this now i charge a 20 dollars membership if you go on the page it's what it is right 20 dollars membership to join it's not a ticket it's a 20 dollars membership and that gives you lifetime access to my virtual events ten dollars of that 20 goes to a charity in other words, giving back. Again, everything I said in Simply right. Smart, you got to be giving back. We pick a charity every month and we give half the money we raise to a charity. And I thought about that when I came up with the idea last year. I mean, I know it's not going to happen this year because events are kind of st struck down. But every Christmas, I go to see the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And you know what they do? They rent out the freaking American Airlines Center. They put on these huge shows and then they walk out and say, this is how much we sold in tickets. Right. And here's a check for 50% of what we sold that we're going to give to this charity. And they bring the people up on stage. Right. Give back, people. Give back to your local community. All right. Local community. And that means local as to where you live or local to where your heart is. Right. We right. Gave, uh, one of our charities this year we gave to was the people who are going through the fires in California. That's not local to me. But that's local to my heart, losing my house. Right, right. And, and so it's if you if you buy a membership, then you're in for all the virtual events going for forward, going back. You yeah. get everything. Yep, you get everything for for twenty dollars. I ten of which goes to a great charity. Yes. Uh, last last thing I want to ask you is, what advice do you give to your inner circle people when they're speaking, as far as what their free free offer should be, their lead magnet. How what what kind of product or how should they go about pitching something to get somebody to continue that relationship with them at the end of their talk? The the product or free offer that you're giving at any speech needs to benefit the person who's getting it. Mm -hmm. All right. In other words, it's got to be something that solves a problem for them in your industry or in the industry you work in. Um, it should be anything that you could think of that would be an objective. Here's what I do. I have one of these sheets and it says, uh, let's see if I can do it up close. There's this problem and solution. Mm -hmm. And I basically sit down for everything I do. I create this mat and I go problem solution. What are the problems they have? And then write down the solution. Your product needs to be, your info product you're giving away needs to solve one of those problems in your industry. That's the biggest thing that you've got to do. It's got to be a problem solver. For me, for the longest time, all right, my free giveaway was nothing more than, hey, uh, guys, if you want to know more about me, all right, I looked like Tom Petty. So I said, <laughs> if you want to know more about me, go to nottompetty.com. And yes, I still own the website, but I cut my hair this year. Um, and that was a gimmick I had for years because I got sick of being told I look like Tom Petty. Right. 90, and I, I mean, I remember speaking at events in 2015 and 16 when I said, go to nottompetty.com. And they're like, that's pretty good. They'll remember the name, not Tom, or they'll remember the name Tom Petty, but they're going to remember Tim Gillette. Right, right. And I mean, make whatever you do simple and easy for them to get to. Uh, you know what I mean? That's it. You got to remember if you come up with something catchy just to get their attention, they're going to go. One of my speeches, I talk about the idea behind like doing my simple, easy branding method. And I go through the website, I must say at least six times in the member in, in a live stream or, or speaking, 
going, hey, go to simpleeasybranding.com where I've got a free video there for you for 10 minutes you can watch, all right, and learn the process of Simple Easy Branding all in 10 minutes. You don't even have to opt in. It's a video. Just go in and play it. Right. And I say that a dozen times. I, I mean, repeat, repeat, repeat. That's part of the Simple Easy Branding process. You know what I mean? And most people are all like, what should I do? What should I offer? If you don't know in the beginning, do something to get a, get start building a community. Mm. Build a newsletter, all right? Come up with a catchy phrase like simple, easy branding that goes with your business. I don't use simple, easy in marketing because I own the trademark and I can stop you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Well, we are going to remember Tim Gillette. We'll remember not Tom Petty, but most importantly, it's the blog and videocon.com coming up on Friday and Saturday. Check it out. Tim, thanks so much for being here. It's been a blast. Hey, keep rocking, guys. Thank you so much, Tim. That is Tim Gillette from the blog and video con, uh, blog and video And I thank Tim for all the knowledge he shared. If you didn't catch all of this, he shared a lot of things that you need to know when it comes to running event, as well as some great tips for speakers and people trying to network and make some money at an event. It's not ticket sales. It's not sponsors. There's a lot more that goes into putting an event on and a lot more ways to monetize. Check out uh, all of this conversation with Tim. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Thank you, Tim Gillette, for being here. We're going to do a quick, quick remix. If you're just joining us, we told you about how great it was using StreamYard for the fifth anniversary Livestream Universe party over uh, on Friday, we had 60 guests. We gave away over $13,000 worth of prizes. We had 31 winners, and we were live for five hours. StreamYard performed beautifully. One of the highlights was John Burke from Al Roker Entertainment talking about why streaming is becoming so popular and what it means in Hollywood. Streaming is where everybody is going towards. We all know that, right? That's kind of like a master of the obvious statement. But watching how these companies internally, especially out here, I live in LA, and watching all these companies shift around their executives to where they were in charge of the linear side of things, now they're moving them out the door. And now digital is taking over these Hollywood institutions, okay? Right. It's really interesting to watch this right now because now we get these reports from our agent that we're, we're about, yeah, we need content for our broadcast or our cable outlet. It's not about that anymore. Now they need it for Peacock. Now they need it for all these digital offerings and the stuff that's on the broadcast and the cable side, it needs to be larger than life. So they need something that's big and explosive and it's going to make a lot of noise. You know why? Because they're losing the battle to streaming. That's John Burke from Al Roker Entertainment, one of 60 guests who joined us. All of them gave predictions and looked at what's coming up for live streaming or other areas of business and online media. Check that out. It's over on the livestreamuniverse.com uh, slash uh, events. Livestreamuniverse.com slash events will take you to the YouTube channel. I've got chapters in there so you can pick the, the different guests and which ones you want to listen and go right to those parts if you'd like to do that. And we also want to tell you about a great guest we got coming up next week. He was amazing having him on the uh, the party on 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 Friday, easy for me to say. He gave uh, me my first ever super chat. So for that alone, we got to come out and support this guy. But he is a, a true expert on YouTube, on YouTube analytics, on YouTube video optimization, on helping people find opportunities to grow their YouTube channel and to make videos that will drive traffic to their channel, to their website, and be able to monetize YouTube. He's he's just an expert in everything. Andrew Can of TubeBuddy. I can't wait. It'll be an honor. It's the season finale of uh, this season of StreamYard Connect, and I uh, can't wait to have Andrew on. Andrew Can from TubeBuddy will be joining us. And thank you all for being here. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, one more episode to go for this season. And I see so many friends are here. We've got uh, D. Nimmin in the chat. Cakes by Sarita. Blending the Blind and Sighted. We have Kathy Castro. Good to see you. JB is here. 
Beauty Bubble is in the chat. Um, Shadow is here. Thank you all on YouTube for being a part of this. And over on Facebook, we, I see MJ Farmer, Robert Brooker, Dean Haley, Dean Hankey. My apologies there. Uh, so many different people. Oh, Marissa Callie's here. Karen Glasser, uh, Mosby Jab. Uh, who else is Carlos Phoenix? Great to see you, Patricia A. Murray, uh, and so many others. Sorry, I can't get to everybody, but I really do appreciate you being here, contributing in the chat, and letting everybody know about what's going on with StreamYard Connect. We'll see you back here next week. It's it'll be another episode of StreamYard Connect. It is every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern right here on Facebook and YouTube on the StreamYard Facebook and YouTube channels. For StreamYard Connect, I'm Ross Brand. Have a great day, everybody.